Next on Startup, we head to Iowa City, Iowa to meet with Veronica, a dedicated frozen yogurt connoisseur who created Yotopia, Iowa City's first frozen yogurt shop that sources local ingredients. Then we're gonna swing by Madison, Wisconsin to meet with Matt, an inventor and tech guru who started Murphy, a company that turns your old CDs and vinyl into high quality digital files. All of this and more is next on Startup. It all starts with an idea and everyone has them. In the world of business where you choose to take your idea determines where your idea will take you. Baker College is proud to support Startup and those who dare to share their ideas with the world. The American small business was built on one thing, relationships. And every time a customer walks through the door, a new one begins. Pay Anywhere was built to help entrepreneurs do what they do best. So keep loving what you do. Just get paid for it. Pay Anywhere. The Chevrolet Volt, an everyday electric car with gas for longer trips. The nature of things to come. Chevrolet, find new roads. American Express is proud to support Startup and the millions of small businesses that put in the hard work to be open for business in neighborhoods across the country. My name is Gary Bredo, and I'm a documentary filmmaker and an entrepreneur. The economy is in less than perfect shape, and when the jobs go away, there's nothing left to do but get up and get creative. And there are people all over America doing just that. It's estimated that up to 85% of new businesses fail. So I'm going coast to coast to hear the personal stories of the people who beat the odds and started a successful business from the ground up. This is Startup. I'm on Clinton Street in Iowa City, Iowa. And we're gonna go talk to Veronica who created Yotopia. Iowa City's original frozen yogurt shop. Let's go hear her story. In the 1930s, Dannon began selling pre-packaged yogurt for the first time in the U.S. By the 1970s, frozen yogurt was introduced as a soft serve dessert. And by the mid 90s, frozen yogurt accounted for 10% of the frozen dessert market. When Veronica moved to Iowa City, she quickly realized that there was nowhere in the city to get her favorite dessert. So she took matters into her own hands. Start by telling us who you are, your name, where you're from, a little bit of background history. Sure. Uh, Veronica Tesler, I grew up in the suburbs of Boston, moved down to Virginia when I was a child, and then have been here in Iowa City for seven years. Where did you go to school? I went to Virginia Commonwealth University in Richmond. And what did you study? I studied political science. I worked in foreign policy for five years before hmm. opening my business. Uh, I worked for a small nonprofit uh, private operating foundation that did international peace and security issues. So I worked on a <laughs> weapons of mass destruction and nuclear nonproliferation before I started my business here. So we had massive layoffs at the foundation where I worked in 2009 due to the recession, and it was at that point that I realized um, working for somebody else, I'd be you know at, working at the whim of the economy and yeah. things like that. And so I thought more about uh, starting my own business and. Have you always kind of had a self-starting, independent entrepreneur nature? I just, I'm a problem solver by nature. I wanted, uh, the problem was there was no frozen yogurt in Iowa City, and I was destined to solve that problem. When did the aha moment hit you, I'm going to do this? Went with my cousins to a frozen yogurt shop in the valley, and I had been thinking about opening a shop for a couple of years now, but it was, that was the aha moment. I thought, you know, they're everywhere in LA, they're nowhere in Iowa, if I can bring it here. Yeah it's bound to be a success and so uh, that was the moment and from there I just downloaded like a template off Google for you know a business plan came up with a business plan <laughs> tell me about the lease and how you went about that sure I would walk around downtown I live just a few blocks from here so I just kind of scope out the area I saw this space here they were um, doing a um, liquidation of it was a shoe store liquidation ah. so I kept my eye on it uh, for a week or so then there was just a for lease sign up in the window a little handwritten Sign and I called uh, it was just the owner. I dealt directly with the owner It was really simple no brokers no realtors just the owner and I and we uh, negotiated a lease 
makes it a lot easier dealing so with an independent, easy. doesn't it? So easy. You don't have to give me an exact number, but somewhere between a thousand and three thousand, or two and five, or roughly. The price? Yeah, the cost, at least. Uh, yeah, between three and four. Okay. Yeah, and it's about so, 1,100 square feet. Did you kind of reverse engineer your numbers to find out how much you product you'd have to sell to cover that? Yeah, that's exactly what I did. Okay, and what did it come out to? Like, how much yogurt do you need to sell? Uh, 85 cups a day. Did that seem scary at first to think about? Well, it did, considering Iowa winters are pretty brutal. So, yeah. um, but we make up for it in the in the summer months. So, does winter dip down pretty low? Pretty low. It's, Pretty awful. <laughs> Nobody wants ice cream in the snow. No. After you acquired the lease, how much stuff had to be done? Because, I mean, this doesn't look anything like a shoe store. No. We, <laughs> well, we got a pretty modest bank loan, so we didn't have a lot of money. We opened this place basically on a shoestring budget. Um, friends of mine all pitched in. We just built the shop. Uh, over six weeks time we hired a, a licensed plumber and electrician because the city required that but everything else uh, we built um, ourselves it was really just a group effort a bunch of friends getting together talking about the loan uh, you went through six different no's tell me uh, tell me about that why what were some of the reasons, the reasons <laughs> how did it were, feel yeah the reasons were you have no money you have no assets uh, you're young and inexperienced, it's a down economy, you're not a franchise, so you don't have a proven model, um, those kinds of things. And you didn't get discouraged after the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth? No, I just figured we got to find the right bank. I was really determined, you know, I really wanted frozen yogurt. Half the reason I opened my store was so that I could eat frozen yogurt every day of my life. How much did you secure for the loan? I uh, secured roughly $65,000. Okay. I mean, that seems like a decent amount. It was decent. I financed my machines. My equipment was the bulk of my costs, and I was able to finance them. According to smallbusinesschronicle.com, you should research whether you want to join a franchise or start your own shop. Franchises provide a template, but the upfront cost can be significant, whereas starting your own shop allows you to better control your startup costs. Explain what the, what the model is for people that don't know. So it's all self-serve. You grab a cup in the back. You can fill up as much or as little as you like. Mm -hmm. uh, add your own toppings. We have everything from fresh fruit to cookie dough and candies. All of our yogurt is uh, locally sourced, so we use a dairy in Northeast Iowa, Country View Dairy, and that's something that sets us apart from our competition. Um, it's all 100% premium, probiotic, live and active cultures, all the good stuff that uh, yogurt is known for. I went up and visited the farm. Uh, found that they were really good people. It's a small family farm and visited the cows and uh, it was a really it was a really great experience and I knew I wanted to do business with them. Did you get to tip them or I did not tip you did the not cows. Tip them. No. Okay. <laughs> Maybe put that on the bucket list but. Well we try to pair flavors that go well together. So cake batter and red velvet cake the mix is the middle lover, so those two together really complement each other nicely. Uh, I was wondering what that yeah. was. That's the blend. That's okay. the swirl. Right, I'm going to put a little bit on this side. This is going to be a... Okay. So that's a swirl of red velvet and cake batter. Cake batter is definitely our best seller in both stores. How active are you in social media? How important is your website? And uh, what platforms are you currently using? We don't have a website. Uh, awesome. I own YotopiaFrozenYogurt.com, but I mean, we're a frozen yogurt shop. I don't really see the. I, I'd like to build a website this summer. It's been yeah. on my, it's on my to-do list. But we are very active in social media on Twitter and on Facebook and Foursquare and Instagram and all that good stuff. And people yeah. are really, uh, it's it's food. It's pretty. It's delicious. So people love engaging about food. A lot of small business owners that we've talked to talk about some of the crippling effects that that negative reviews can do to your business. Have you ever had any negative? My favorite Yelp review is somebody who wrote in and said, it's just frozen yogurt, which, yeah, the name of our business is Yotopia Frozen Yogurt. I don't know what else he was expecting, but I think for <laughs> right. those, for those what, who... What, did you want a back massage? <laughs> yeah, like, come right. on, <laughs> it's yogurt. So, but I think all of our, all of our reviews have been uh, very positive, and um, I'm very fortunate for that. You should tell them, thanks for the new uh, tagline. It's just frozen yogurt. <laughs> H.P. Hood introduced frozen yogurt in New England in the 1970s as a soft-serve dessert under the name Frogurt. Even though frozen yogurt is similar to ice cream, Froyo is healthier, containing less fat and less calories. What attracted you to come in and work at this fine establishment? 
Um, when I first moved here uh, last summer, I was looking for jobs and I really didn't want to work in like a, like a dark, dingy bar and I had come in here when I was at orientation and um, remembered like how bright and sunny it was and thought that it would be a really like fun and lively place to work. So to really understand yogurt, do you think it helps to be cultured? <laughs> Sorry, I we, had we to. We love puns yeah, here at Antopia, so please, any more that you have. Okay. What are you eating there? Chocolate and strawberries and strawberries, marshmallows and strawberries and um, chocolate. Um, Looks like some marshmallows too, huh? Yeah. I forgot what the brown, the the white brown ones are. Maybe some Reese cups. So, do you like Utopia? Is this your favorite place to come yeah. get yogurt? Yeah. Are you happy? Do you love what you do? What's in it for the future for you? I mean, is this it? Like, kind of paint a picture of where you are right now, mentally, emotionally, sort of. This is, uh, I don't think this is it. I think this is, you know, a step in uh, kind of a bigger story. Um, I don't know what's next. I love what I do right now. Yeah. I just opened my second shop. For any other person out there that has an idea, what advice would you give to them? Consulting those who know more than you. I mean, I'm the first to admit that I knew very little going into this, and so I really trusted uh, others and more experienced people and people in the community um, and, and made sure that the idea was, was worth uh, executing. Thank you so much for talking Thank to us you. today. Thank you. Thanks for coming. There are a million ways to start a business, but how did Veronica do it? Let's find out. She started with $25,000 in the bank and a credit score of 670. She spent $160,000 to open the business up that she acquired from a bank loan. In her first year, she made $375,000 and turned a profit. And the one word that Veronica used to explain what it takes to make it in business is tenacity. Veronica gave us the scoop on starting a business and there's nothing vanilla about her work ethic. Being an entrepreneur can take up a lot of your time, but it's that first big spoonful of success that puts the cherry on top and makes it all worth it. For more information, log on to our website and click the link for Utopia. I'm on Pinckney Street in Madison, Wisconsin, and I'm going to go talk to Matt, one of the co-founders of Murphy, an online marketplace that helps you catalog old CDs and vinyl records. Let's go hear his story. Music industry revenue in 2013 was at roughly $7 billion in the U.S., and it's held steady at that number since 2009, showing stability after the freefall from the early 2000s. Audio formats have changed numerous times over the years from vinyl to cassettes, to CDs to MP3s, making it hard to keep an up-to-date music collection. Matt discovered a market for helping people adjust their music collection from an older, outdated format to new, high-quality digital files. Tell me about your education, some of your work history. It's good to know you. Sure. Um, I'm a Wisconsin kid, born and raised in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Went to UW-Madison. Okay. Um, I have degrees in electrical engineering and computer science, so I'm a nerd two times over. Another underachiever. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I've always been involved with startups. I mean, I've been a kind of a startup ever since I was age 12 with a paper route. I always joke my first exit was selling my paper route to my brother when I was 14. So, and I've had a business really ever since. Right. My first job out of college, I, I worked on a startup called Vosaic. We were doing video. We were one of the first companies to do video and audio streaming over the internet. We sold the company to a publicly traded video conferencing company. Were you, you were one of the owners of the company or? One of yeah, like 10 people. I wasn't a founder. Okay. There were some P comp comp sci PhDs that um, kind of got the company started. What was the next step after that? But at that point, I, I uh, kind of looked at a project that I had been working on in college called TurboTap. And that was a, a device for pouring draft beer faster with less waste. Did you end up getting it into any bars or doing anything big with the product? Yeah, tur yeah TurboTap did, did really well. Um, we ended up in a lot of sports stadiums. What ended up happening with the, with the company? 
Uh, that company is still operational. Really? Um, I uh, exited in 2007. I guess the fun part about it was you had to have, we actually had beer you know, in the office at all times. You know, so you can't, can't <laughs> really complain about that. That could definitely that, yeah. lend itself to a, to a very productive work environment for yes, sure. Yes, it was, it was terrific, yeah. So after TurboTap, um, I took a little bit of time off and, um, and it wasn't when I was moving back to Madison, after having taken the time off, I was unboxing all of my possessions, of which I had a few boxes of CDs, and, yep. I, and as I was unboxing them, I said, well, this is a little bit strange because I don't own a CD player anymore. Um, you know, learning that there are 15 billion other CDs out there, yeah. problem, learning that every, just about every friend that I talked to still had them, so they hadn't just thrown them away or done something with them. You know, it's so hard that, to that throw music that, away. Well, that's just it, exactly. Um, and, and that to me meant that everybody had the same sort of emotional ties. Uh, I was introduced to um, my co-founders, kind of found them in Madison through friends and friends of friends, and they kind of shared sort of the same similar vision around, uh, around the, the problem that we're attempting to solve. And it's a big problem when you think about you know, creating a platform for collecting music you know, yeah. well into the future. Is, is that kind of how you approach a new business, find a problem, and then develop yeah, a solution. Yeah, certainly for me. I mean, the recognizing the problem is sort of the big thing. So if I look at um, TurboTap, mm -hmm. I was waiting in line for a beer. And it was sort of That's like online, it was moving slowly, it was warm, I really wanted a beer. So mm -hmm. that was recognizing the problem. And the question is, well, how do you create the solution? And usually, it's not like the movie Back to the Future, where the guy falls and hits his head on the toilet, and boom, <laughs> the flux capacitor, right? It's, right. A, it's, a, it's an evolution, it's a process. You know, oftentimes, we're in such a routine, we're on autopilot, we don't stop to think about, you know, oh geez, you know, that could be faster, this could be better, to sort mm -hmm. of, you know, just sort of accept the status quo. So I think it kind of starts with not just sort of being willing to accept the status quo. The largest vinyl record collection on file features more than one million LPs. The name, what is it? Murphy, M-U-R-F-I-E. So it, the derivation is Material Recycling Facility, M-R-F. Um, so we added in, a uh, couple of vowels to do it and uh, registered the domain and we had murphy.com. Explain to me what Murphy is like I'm a five-year-old. <laughs> uh, so if, if you have a music collection at home, CDs or vinyl, you can send it to us uh, and we have trained experts here that will digitize that, put it into a private locker in the cloud where you can then access all of that content on any device anywhere. For the flip side, for people that want to continue to collect music, mm -hmm. uh, we have a marketplace. So all these CDs that come in, not everyone wants to keep them. Some folks want to sell them. And so you can come into our marketplace and sell uh, or even trade uh, music. And it's, a, it's an important thing to remember, it's one for one. So if you're the CD owner, you're not selling multiple copies, digital copies of one CD. Once very, it's gone, very important. It's gone. So once you sell your CD, it is no longer yours, it is that new that new person's CD to enjoy. That's very important. So I'm like, oh, so I can sell my, <laughs> my print CD a thousand times. times. No, 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 that was Napster and that didn't work out so well. We're at the opposite end of streaming. So, so there's one future that's purely streaming where you're renting your music. Like Spotify, Pandora. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, and then you, you know, kind of, you start and end your music experience on those services with nothing. On Murphy, you start and end with your music. It seems like there's a direct, very tangible element to this business. Mm -hmm. Bringing in a box of physical CDs, yep, yep. it gets handed to you. Um, and then of course the online element to it. Mm -hmm. So walk me through both sides of that and how it was able to develop. The first step was getting the basic brand kind of built and getting uh, a website mm -hmm. up and, and platform built so that we could start to bring in the content. Mm -hmm. And then it was a matter of, because you know a lot of it is building up this collection of music collections. Yeah. Uh, so it's like, how do we get discs in the door? And so initially it was it was free, so it was you, folks could send in their music to us for free as Holy we wanted cow. to build that up. Yeah, it was great. So you, you missed out. Now we charge for uh, charge for all this sort of thing, mm -hmm. um, but it, it allowed us to get sort of that first hundred thousand, first two hundred thousand CDs. It seems in the like door. a heavy workload. This is why Murphy will not be upended by you know really like brilliant college students in a coffee shop because you have to be willing. <laughs> to roll up your work. sleeves and actually carry boxes around and, and store things and barcode things. And sure. there's, a, there's a big logistics component to what we do. What did you use to get the word out? Uh, one of the better PR hits for us early on was on National Public Radio. Okay. Um, they had they sent out a broadcaster that kind of did a piece and it, they ended up going national. And then you did a few other kind of local papers like New York Times and Wall Street Journal and that type you, you of thing. You get there eventually, yeah. Uh, <laughs> New, York, New York Times and CNET yeah. and now we never really know. Like every now and then an article just kind of pops up. Normally if you ask an entrepreneur, do you want to be in the New York Times today? They say, sure, I want to be in the New York Times today. No, not but, ready. But, it, but it's not always the best, best, uh, best answer to that question. You know, you kind of want to be 
in, you know, in the Wisconsin State Journal today and the New York Times in two months. So you got to you know, be ready to handle today. that level of PR. You got to be ready to catch that lightning in the model because you never know when it's going to strike you. So we're in the, our warehouse space. This is where we put together kits for folks that uh, want to send in their CDs to Murphy. So uh, depending on how many CDs um, folks uh, want to send in, we have various boxes of different sizes, but we'll send you a box with a prepaid shipping label and everything else, make it really simple. Your CDs come back in a box that looks like this, and they're pretty heavy. And they're all uh, all kind of put in here. There's 100 CDs in this box. 100? 100, yep. Right about 20, <laughs> about 20 pounds Jeez, or so. What, so what yeah, music collections, are, music, music collections are heavy. On big days, I think the UPS you know, uh, guy is generally probably not very happy with us because they are pretty heavy and we get a lot of boxes in. Sure. Uh, but you know, it's, it's, uh, it's good business for UPS. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone but the driver. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you could stretch out into a straight line all the data stored on a single CD, it would reach over four miles in length. What's your favorite thing about working here? My favorite thing about working here is that Murphy creates a place where you can really develop your skills. So like I mentioned, I do all these different things because um, it's a small company. Mm -hmm. So these positions are, are open for us to do the most that we can do with them. And you get to wear a lot of different hats. So your experience is like exponential. Exactly. You got with your partners, developed the idea, but I'm sure that there were some hefty costs involved in starting. You can only be so lean when you're dealing with physical goods and you can only be so lean in the music space when competitors are Apple and Amazon and other companies that have raised hundreds of millions of dollars. We've been able to kind of get Move Murphy along in a relative shoestring in the music industry. We've done raised about four million dollars. Is the business profitable? Uh, we are unit profitable but not profitable overall. So, um, so we need to continue to scale. What formats were you listing on then? Had you kind of already switched over to listening to digital music? I'd been through several waves of converting my CDs and vinyl to uh, iTunes and other services yeah. and didn't find that very useful because it was often locked up on a particular computer. So my first experience was walking through what it would cost and that went pretty quickly. And Buck an album, right? Well, yeah. Within, I'd say about five to seven days, I had all the CDs, so about 230 of those suddenly became available. I also took advantage of a service that Murphy has with a company called Sonos to, to buy some wireless devices that I could put around my house that make it very easy to have very high quality audio anywhere from my basement to my attic without having to, to move a heavy speaker amplifier system or walk around with a boom box. So that's been great. What advice would you have for, for other entrepreneurs out there that are trying to do something that they're passionate about or solve a problem? No one has more passion for your own idea than you. Of course. So, so that, that I think is, and, and oftentimes people I think forget that. Um, because they, 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 they think, oh, I've got this great idea, I, do, I want somebody else to kind of run with it, I'll give them the idea, and that's just, that's very naive to think that mm -hmm. way. So if you're not willing to see it through, no one else is really going to be there to sort of back you up, I think. Um, so that, that's sort of advice, advice number one. And then, you know, advice number two is, you know, it, you should be taking a big swing at the plate because starting a company is hard. So if you're successful, you want to make it a big success, not a, not a small success. Thank you so much for talking with us today. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. There are a million ways to start a business, but how did Matt do it? Let's find out. He started the business with $500,000, acquired through personal funds and a seed loan. His credit score was over 800, and in its first year, the company took a $60,000 loss. If he could do it again, he would have simplified the overall concept. The one word that Matt uses to describe what it takes to really make it in business is action. When an idea strikes a chord, it's always best to tune in and see how the idea plays out in the marketplace. And passion is instrumental for conducting a business that truly measures up. And it looks like Murphy has people all over the country singing its praises. For more information, log on to our website and click the link for Murphy. What does social media play in business today? I would say everything. Social media is where your customer base most likely is because 
Uh, normally we look at the markets 18 to 35 and a lot of them are digital natives at this point. They're also communicating through these social media platforms as well as there are ways that the individuals who are your consumers can check every one of your competitor's prices at the same exact time. So you no longer can kind of make it and they will come. You have to be part of the social media platform. Next time on Startup, we head to Asheville, North Carolina to talk to Grace and Mariano, two friends that met in college and started Appalach, a clothing company that makes handmade outdoor apparel with locally sourced wool. Then we head to Edwardsville, Illinois to meet with Jenny and Ed, a married couple that met in culinary school and started Cleveland Heat, a restaurant that has critics raving from all over the country. Be sure to join us next time on Startup. That's another option for you. Okay. See, this might be a little bit more your color. This one fits perfect. Oh, it feels good too. Like it was made for you? I feel very free. What? So I know we're on opposite sides of the fence, but why do you always gotta balk about what you do, huh? American Express is proud to support Startup and the millions of small businesses that put in the hard work to be open for business in neighborhoods across the country. The Chevrolet Volt, an everyday electric car with gas for longer trips. The nature of things to come. Oh, Chevrolet, find new roads. The American small business was built on one thing, relationships. And every time a customer walks through the door, a new one begins. Pay Anywhere was built to help entrepreneurs do what they do best. So keep loving what you do. Just get paid for it. Pay Anywhere. It all starts with an idea, and everyone has them. In the world of business, where you choose to take your idea determines where your idea will take you. Baker College is proud to support startups and those who dare to share their ideas with the world.